shiny aluminium foil. The most abundant metal in the Earth's crust, aluminium, naturally occurs as a compound with other elements, such as aluminium oxide or potassium aluminium sulfate. As such, it was not isolated as a separate element until 1825, when a Danish chemist, Hans Christian Orsted, was able to produce a small amount. By 1845, a German chemist, Frederick Waller, had perfected a way of producing enough aluminium to be able to study it. In 1854, the French chemist Henri Etienne Saint Clair de Ville improved on Waller's method and developed a process to commercially produce the element, although it still remained expensive, even more than gold. Other improvements were made independently by chemists Charles Martin Hall, American, and Paul L. T. Harreau, French, in 1886, and by Carl Joseph Bayer, Austrian, in 1888. As a result, sufficiently large quantities of aluminium oxide were now able to be produced from bauxite, and then aluminium could easily be obtained from the aluminium oxide. This greatly reduced the cost of aluminium, and in 1888, Charles Martin Hall formed the precursor to the Aluminium Company of America, Alcoa, the Pittsburgh Reduction Company. Production methods continued to improve, and by 1909, the Pittsburgh Company's output was at 41,000 kilograms per day. By 1910, the first manufacturing plant for the production of aluminium foil opened in Emmishofen, Switzerland, by Dr. Leber, Nia, and Sai. So why is aluminium foil shiny on one side and not so much on the other? In what is called the Bayer process, after pure molten aluminium is obtained from aluminium oxide, it is placed in furnaces with a small amount of other elements. Typically, the final product will be between 99.8 and 99.9% aluminium. This liquid is then poured into chill casting devices where it cools into large slabs called ingots. Then the ingot is treated with heat, annealed, and then rolled between heavy rollers. This initial foil is sent through still more rollers several times until it reaches the desired thinness. For the type of foil that is bright on one side and matte on the other, it is so thin that during some of the last rollings, two sheets of thin foil must be placed together lest they tear or crimp during the final rolling of the sheets. One consequence of this is that while the sides that touch the highly polished aluminium rollers are burnished to a bright finish, the inner sides that touch the other aluminium foil remain matte. Bonus Foil Facts Before aluminium became cheap and readily available, during the last part of the 19th and early 20th centuries, a type of thin foil, used commercially, was actually made of tin, tin foil. Because of the popularity of this foil, today many call aluminium foil this name. Bonus Fact 2 More than just packaging, aluminium can be used to polish silver. After lining a deep pan with foil, cover it with cold water and add a couple of teaspoons of salt to your silverware. Chemistry, magic, will remove the tarnish. A similar process can be used to clean jewelry, except exchange the cold water for hot and the salt for a tablespoon of laundry detergent. Likewise, a sheet of aluminium foil underneath freshly polished silverware will deter tarnishing. Bonus Fact 3. Scissors can be sharpened by cutting through several layers of aluminium foil a few times. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.